I was going to check my firewood today and <laughs> I've got a new moisture meter. Never in a million years did I think I'd do an unboxing video, but here we are. Anyway, I've got two others, but they're really old now and they're not giving consistent results. So I thought I'll use the two old ones and one new one to check my firewood. There's the wood for next winter. There's the wood, I'm just, that's the new stuff for the winter after. But what I'm interested in today is that wood over there in the back. That's been there two or three years. Sadly, the man I cut that with died this autumn. Anyway, it's right in the corner beside my trailer and importantly, under a big old apple tree. Now, of all the places I store wood, this is possibly the worst. But just before we get started, this wood that I've got has been in my own wood stack. But the test with a moisture meter, you could do exactly the same if a load of logs had just been delivered. Most merchants are decent and honest, a few are not. Now, let's get some wood. The important thing here is to get a sample from different places. And because this isn't a very big stack, I'm going to choose six logs to test. I think if you're getting a bigger heap delivered, choose between eight and 12. Right, what have we got? Ooh, big bit of birch. Oh, and some beech. And oh, it's more birch, a bit of apple. Hmm, what else have we got? Ooh, hazel. Okay, uh, four. We'll have another birch and another bit of oak. <laughs> okay, before I drop them all, let's get these to the chopping block. That lot collapsed on me yesterday, but that's safety in the woodshed. Another video, eh? Now, the other thing I've got is a book. I'm not going to be a complete anorak about this, but if you're testing six logs and you're doing two or three stabs in each, I actually make a note of what the uh, readings are. Now, <laughs> here are my two really old moisture meters. Importantly, I've put a new battery, well, batteries in both of them. That is really important. You're not going to get a good result from a moisture meter without. Now, <laughs> I never thought I would be doing an unboxing video, but here goes. Why I chose this one is because it seems to be firewood specific. The instructions, where are they? They're there. Like most men, I'll read those if I can't get it to work. Anyway, here we are, my new my new moisture meter. So it's got four wood classes and I'm really interested in what readings I get from this one compared to my older ones. I know at the end of the day I'm only after a convergent approximation. I need to know that my wood is less than 20% moisture content but as I show in one of the other videos if you can get it down to 15% say instead of 20 then it's a much, much cleaner burn. And if you can get it down to 12 or something, so much the better. So even though 20% is the accepted threshold, every single percentage moisture content your firewood is drier is a real bonus when it comes to clean fires. Anyway, let's get the battery in and get this one tested. Something really important before you start using the moisture meter is to split the logs. You'll get a much more accurate result if you check in the middle of a log and at each end. So my six logs, I'm splitting them in half when I'm not falling over them.
I can't split the hazel with this little axe, so I'm going to get a bigger one because it's really important to test different species. So I'll just whack that with a bigger axe and then we'll test their moisture. Hmm, that was easy. Right tool for the job, eh? So let's start with English oak. It's had some longhorn beetles in it. This moisture meter, I've had it for years, but it's playing up. The figures won't settle and they look wrong anyway. I might actually have to dig the instructions out for this one. This one happily seems to be functioning normally. Now, with a ring porous species like oak, you might find that you get a different reading in the heartwood and sapwood. Happily with this, the sapwood looks remarkably consistent, reading about 16%, both in the middle and at each end. That's great. However, when we try the new moisture meter, a distinctly different reading. Okay, only 1.3% less, but I don't know. The important thing maybe, as I said a while back, is not to get too hung up on detail. You are trying to get a convergent approximation. This, this isn't science, it's guidance. So the moisture meter is guiding you. It's probably not giving you an accurate reading. Anyway, whether that log is 14 something or 16 I'm very happy with it now a piece of apple and again a little bit surprisingly when I did the test I was getting about a 2% difference between these two meters As I say, a mild irritation, but not actually important. Another thing, this piece of hazel. Now, note I've put this rip cut in all of my small logs. It helps them to dry. 15, that'll do. And what are we going to get? I've forgotten. Ah, 12 and a half. I wish. Now, there's a lot more information about moisture content, moisture meters and everything in my book, because I really believe in this stuff. And even better, if you are after the most magnificent book for detail, then Desh and Dunwiddie is for you. A university textbook required reading. So lastly, let's finish with some beach. Fantastic wood, probably my favorite. And, for once, my moisture meters agree. Wonderful. You'll also note I didn't take any notes. I think with six logs, that would have been a bit over the top. But if I was doing a big pile of delivered firewood, I would have made notes. Well, that was an excellent test. And this is my favourite new moisture meter. Now, I was talking to someone the other day, someone really experienced in wood burning, and they were surprised that I used a moisture meter. They said, they've got the experience, you know, they're, they're old and wise and they've been burning firewood all their life and they use the old country methods of telling whether it's dry or not. Well, that's all very well, but remember the words of Mark Twain, or he didn't actually say this, but he said something very like, good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. Well, why not use a moisture meter if you're an absolute novice, use one all the time, and as you get more and more experienced, just use one from time to time to check that what you think is right. Now, I've driven a car for years and years and years. I can roughly judge my speed, but I look at the speedo. I've worked in the countryside all my life. I know about 
sunset, sunrises, how high the swallows are flying, what the cows are doing. The men in the woods talked about mock suns and water dogs and mackerel skies, and I know all of that, and it's fun, but I watch the weather forecast. So with logs, yes, you've got all the, all the things like the log is duller in colour, it makes a hollow sound when knocked together. It's, uh, what else have we got? We've got cracking and checking on the logs. That's tiny little cracks right on the end of the log. Bark falling off. Um, there's a peculiar test that you can blow through a dry log. I don't use that one. But anyway, by all means, learn all the different bits of country lore on how to check your firewood is dry. But at the end of the day, a moisture meter is not a toy. It's an excellent bit of kit. And in these days when we're being encouraged more and more to burn efficiently, why not check that you're putting the best fuel you can into your stove? I will. Well, that was great. I am so pleased with the new machine and I'm really pleased to learn that my firewood is better than I thought it was. Ah, <sighs> sigh of relief. Um... Uh -huh.